hommes et les femmes, dès le plus jeune âge, éduquons nos jeunes garçons et nos jeunes filles. Car après tout, l'école est un échantillon de la société de demain. Inutile d'être un visionnaire, regardez ce qu'il se passe dans les cours de récréation et vous aurez alors une idée précise de notre future société. L'ensemble des objectifs pour un troisième millénaire rappelle ces enjeux et propose des solutions concrètes avec l'aide de la société civile. Je vous informe, Madame la commissaire adjointe, que le 17 mars, à l'occasion de la Commission des Nations Unies sur les statuts des femmes, nous adresserons un plaidoyer à l'ensemble des États membres avec comme thématique la place des femmes dans les mécanismes des décisions publiques. Nous vous remercions tous pour votre présence et mesurons l'enchance accordée que vous nous que vous nous écoutiez pour ces problématiques si capitales. Nous sommes sûrs, madame, que vous saurez défendre ces thématiques avec l'aide de vos conférenciers et de votre collègue en charge de l'Europe, madame Anne Faverdin, à qui nous cédons la parole. Oui, bonjour à tous. Chère madame Gabé, commissaire adjointe Afrique, merci pour cette invitation. Euh, je vais également m'exprimer en français et juste euh, annoncer euh, deux mots avant d'introduire euh, le, le propos de la journée et, et de cette conférence. L'égalité femmes-hommes, même si elle est mise à l'honneur aujourd'hui, n'est pas le sujet d'une seule journée, mais vraiment un combat de, de tous les jours, dans tous les domaines et auprès de toutes les institutions. C'est une quête incessante qui passe également par de la représentativité. Le fait d'en parler est une avancée, le fait de l'appliquer engage réellement le mouvement. Et c'est ce que nous faisons au sein du COSCOP, une ambition que nous partageons avec Madame Gabé, qui nous a rejoints dans ce combat pour une éducation des jeunes filles et des jeunes garçons de manière apaisée et équitable. Et c'est un plaisir de porter cette cause aussi bien entourée. L'ensemble des membres du COSCOP et moi-même sommes honorés d'être présents et d'être représentés par Madame Florence Gabé, commissaire adjointe Afrique, à qui je laisse la parole. À tous. Thank you very much, Hélène. Euh, C'est peut-être pas la peine de traduire du coup euh, pour Madame Toutou. On enverra Hello. en anglais euh, le texte de Jackie et ce qu'a dit euh, Anne. Euh, yes, I have à... put a little footnotes in the chat, so that's okay. Ok. Je it's te okay. laisse la parole, Hélène. All right. Uh, maybe um, just right now, we, I would just would like to thank Florence and uh, the audience for organizing such a prestigious event on the 8th of March, which is always a very important uh, date for women around the world, because obviously, as just mentioned, um, it's a moment to talk, but it's also a moment to highlight those who are walking the talk. And uh, it was a great joy for me uh, to be able to invite to partake in this panel, uh, Mrs. Empu Tutu, who is a friend for a number of years and a person whom I admire extremely deeply because I think she embodies so much of um, the reality we wish to become true around the world in terms of uh, and empowerment and uh, also in terms of activism because EMPO is doing so much in this world. So uh, I'm looking forward to Florence uh, putting to us a couple of questions and uh, to listening to EMPO and I'd be very happy obviously to add my little stone uh, to express as well how in my much more humble way I'm also trying to push forward gender equality in this world, whom I think is key, definitely key uh, to um, bringing more harmony in this world and opening potentials for humanity uh, to achieve more and definitely to achieve uh, the 17 sustainable uh, goals. Uh, which is the agenda 2030 that the United Nations has uh, has uh, implemented. Okay, je commence avec la première question, Hélène. Yes, it sounds good. 
and so uh, at the level of your life uh, do you feel that you have helped moving forward gender equality on this planet how and what are the main initiatives you are championing at the moment oh. um good morning and Thank you, and I apologize. Um, my French is not good enough to be able to address you in French. Um, and so I'm very grateful um, for um, Hélène uh, to, to offer me the translation and, and to you for being gracious enough to listen to me speaking in English. Um, and I... Um, I'm honored to, to be with you on this International Women's Day. Um, and I, I believe that gender equality um, is actually a benefit for all of us, um, men, women, um, and as, as well as um, people who, who are gender non-binary. Um, that that it is um, equality that allows us to offer our um, best efforts to improving life on our planet for all of us. Um, I I like to think that I have um, played a role in advancing gender equality even incrementally, even a, even a small piece. Um, in the work that I do, yes, and in the life that I have lived, yes. Um, the initiatives that I am currently involved with, uh, two of them are uh, really close to my heart. Uh, Um, I, I am involved in an in, uh, in initiative um, in association with two partners, um, Orgis, which is based in Ghana, and Hope Initiatives International, which is based in, um, in Ireland, and the Tutu Teach Foundation, which is based here in the Netherlands. We have created an initiative called the Julia Tree, and the Julia Tree is an initiative in support, in support of um, the Great Green Wall, the Great Green Wall being the African Union project um, that has as its goal to build a, to grow a wall of trees um, across the Sahel uh, to combat the desertification, um, to help to reverse desertification in the Sahel. Um, we know that um, the damage done to our planet by desertification has been immense. Um, it has been immense in terms of um, the impact it has on food security. It has been immense in the impact it has on the lives of women. It has been immense in the impact that it has had on refugee flows, on war and instability across the Sahel and deeper into the, um, the dry lands of, of Africa. And so this um, Great Green Wall Initiative is, is one that I think all of us should get on board to support, um, not only because it is an African solution to what looks initially like an African problem, but it is an African solution to the global problem of global warming. Um, we know that, uh, that trees create their own climate, that forests can help us to reverse climate change that trees capture carbon. There is um, so much more that is embedded in this project um, in the sense that uh, we grow fruiting trees and these become a source of income as well for the communities that are growing these trees. 
Um, the other initiative in which I'm involved is a uh, mentoring platform, um, hashtag I2Women, um, in which we invite women to provide mentoring support for other women so that all of us have a way to climb um, the ladder to our career dreams and have support for doing that. I, I I yield back to um, to Florence. Thank you so much, Impo. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sorry. Uh, and Elaine, what about you? Well, I'm I'm standing in deep admiration of uh, the two initiatives. First of all, that uh, Empo has just. Um, has just described the Julia tree is a fantastic way to draw the attention on the Great Green Wall. I know, uh, Florence, we sent you the link to uh, the trailer of the film. Would you would you consider showing it now, or do you think it's for people to watch it independently? Yes, I think it's possible. Uh, yes. Lucy, you are here. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I I want just one minute, just one minute. Okay. While while you prepare maybe to show the trailer, uh, I want to to echo as well. Uh, obviously, this is an amazing initiative, and it's true that we can see that the seventeen SDGs are all intertwined together, and it's clear when you start to talk about. Um, combating uh, climate change and combating desertification, you automatically obviously talk about the Sahel and you talk about uh, reforestation and you can see that everything is connected together and gender equality is one of the components, it's part of all the components as well. Uh, you cannot fight poverty if you don't fight gender inequality, you cannot fight um, climate change if you don't fight poverty and so on and so forth. So, you know, to become conscious at the beginning of this new century that all these causes are closely intertwined together, that we all are connected together and we cannot just live an independent life that has no consequences and that has that its causes have no connections with our other lives is just an illusion. So I think it's very interesting uh, to start this new century with this awareness, because when you become aware of challenges and you start to develop a vision, then you can start to take actions that have greater and greater impact and greater and greater significance. And basically, you feel better because you feel you're part of a greater uh, ensemble, the human community. And uh, I think, Empo, it's your dad uh, who created, or at least who brought to the consciousness of the world, the concept of Ubuntu, you know, that uh, we all are interrelated, interconnected, and only uh, in behaving in a responsible, caring manner towards everyone, can we foster a better world? So uh, it's definitely an incredible legacy that you're carrying on your shoulders. And I think the way you, you embrace it and you embody it is, is a fantastic um, shining light for, for the whole of the world and for all of us. So, so that's my first reaction to Empo's uh, presentation of the Great Green Wall Initiative and the Tutu and the, the Julia Tree, the Julia Tree and the Tutu Teach uh, Foundation activity. Uh, Florence, just interrupt me any moment when you feel you can present the trailer of, of the film. That's no problem. 
Okay, so I propose we continue and we will okay. finish the video of Julia Tree as soon as it's ready. Okay. 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 Perfect. So, um, if I were to add personally, what am I doing and what have I been doing to answer the same questions that you've asked, uh, you've put to Empo? Uh, as far as I am concerned, I have joined an organization called the International Women's Forum. Uh, a forum which is at the moment counting more than 7,000 women around the world, an organization which was created in the United States of America half a century ago, and which purpose was pretty similar to the one that uh, EMPO has uh, highlighted as far as the, the Tutu Teach Foundation uh, is concerned, which is empowering women to embrace any career, any kind of professional uh, endeavors. And uh, that has been a fight for many, many decades. I mean, a lot of people take it for granted today that you, uh, especially in the Western world, that if you're a girl now, you can access every career and it's no longer an issue. Uh, it had been, and uh, it's been a fight. And to achieve this progress, there has been a lot of pooling and um, and campaigning and supporting each other and finding ways to empower each other. So this is what the IWF organization is doing around the world. And it's been a great uh, joy for me to uh, discover the sisterhood uh, of women inside IWF in France, but also abroad. And to be able to share and confront our perspectives and to Create also a supporting network uh, is very, very empowering and also very gratifying. So I would encourage anyone who has a possibility uh, to join such a network to, to join in and to, um, you know, give some of their time and some of their energy to move in that direction. So that's been the first pillar of my activity to advance uh, equality gender in the world. Um, there has been a second, much more, I would say, personal uh, endeavor of mine, which, um, in fact, for me, EMPO is uh, the dream come true, because uh, EMPO is, is a reverend. She's a spiritual leader, and maybe she'll be uh, gracious enough to tell us a little more about this. Uh, and in the spiritual faith I was born into, which is uh, Roman Catholicism, such a gender equality option uh, to this day does not exist. There cannot be yet a Catholic empo, a Roman Catholic empo. Uh, I'm still dreaming that this is going to happen. And uh, this is why I created um, a little collective called All Women Apostles. I created this um, in 2020 with a certain number of other women. We were seven of us, uh, led by Anne Supa, who is a senior theologian who has um, acted in a very, let's say, uh, disobedient way. She has uh, applied to be a bishop of Lyon. That created a big uh, media shock in France because uh, how would a woman dare uh, introducing her candidature to become an archbishop when in fact in the Roman Catholic Church so far, women are not even uh, allowed to become a priest or any form of spiritual uh, leader. So we have created this movement. We are seven of us, but now there are more and more. We are actually today going to transform our little uh, group, which was quite informal into a, an official association, an official NGO. And uh, we hope to be able to rally a lot of support and continue because I believe that uh, as long as in spiritual monotheisms, but any spiritual family really, uh, that women and men and anybody really disregarding their gender, uh, is not in a position or in a capacity to be treated as equal. I feel that spiritual uh, families have failed to deliver their most essential message, which is about love and about respect and about 
never judging a human being because he's a man or he's a woman. So therefore, he or she cannot do such or such a, a leading activity in the community. So for me, it's a dream that uh, Empo can be sitting on this panel and can tell us uh, what she feels about this action we are doing inside the Roman Catholic Church. Um, I remember I had spoken to her uh, beloved uh, dad when I met him in South Africa, and I had uh, asked him many years ago, um, what did he feel about the fact that in the Roman Catholic Church, women were still to the day I was talking to him empowered and as always has a great sense of humor so he laughed and he told me oh it's only a matter of time so that gave me a lot of encouragement and a great joy inside my heart because I could feel that he was indicating there was no reason why this situation was the way it was so I would be very happy to hear uh, what Empo could tell us about this how does she look at uh, the fact that in spiritual leadership in, in different faiths and religions around the world, women are still left uh, aside, are still not empowered. Um, how do you feel about it? What do you think? How can we change it? And so on. I'm so uh, interesting to hear your reaction, Empo. Do you want I I uh, we see the video now? Yeah, if you okay. have okay. Uh, see it to show okay. it, yeah, it'd be nice little break. Okay, you saw the video? 
So we saw the video, but we didn't get okay. the sound. Okay, thank you. Uh, with the sound, it's okay? We didn't hear the sound. Je pense ah. qu'on n'a pas vu la vidéo parce que ça, ça laguait beaucoup et je pense que ça serait peut-être mieux de mettre le lien sur la barre latérale. Ok, ok, ok. okay. I give you the link. Ok. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, so, Miss Tutu, uh, I will let you answer Hélène's question. Um, thank you, Hélène, for the question. And I, um, I, I salute you and I, I salute the courageous women who um, continue to bring to the for forefront the need for a fully inclusive spiritual leadership um, in, in your church and in, in, in your community. Um, I, I must testify when I was young, um, being a reverend wasn't an option for a woman um, in, in my church. Um, and that's that the change in my church is something that is within my living memory. And I'm not old uh, or, or <laughs> I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm not very old. Um, and 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 it came about um, because women like you um, continued to say that it is not right to um, exclude women from roles of leadership. And there were men who supported that understanding. Um, we, we were fortunate in, in our denomination um, that, that the, the call to ordain women has gone around the world. Um, and for a, a very long time, and a call for the full inclusion of women has been something that, that women have worked on um, for decades, but that men have worked on as well and recognized that, um, that there is something missing in the um, expression of God who made um, who made all of humanity in God's own image, um, that when we close off um, the, the roles of leadership from half of humanity, that we can't have a full vision of, of what it is that God looks like, how it is that God is in the world, who it is that, um, that God wants to be in our lives. And so I'm I'm pleased that that you continue to to work and to pray for that full inclusion. And I absolutely join you in that. Um, the the week before my ordination, I spent um, at, in a in a Roman Catholic convent, and um, I was so privileged by the prayerful support of the of the sisters um, and not only did they prayerfully support me but they asked me for my prayers for um, our Roman Catholic sisters that they may one day also be able to celebrate um, the ordination and full inclusion of women in leadership in the Roman Catholic Church. And so I, I think that it's not a question of whether, but a question of when. Thank you so much, Mpo. This is a great uh, encouragement and it will go far. I know um, my sister is inside the, the group uh, all women apostles, they will um, they will feel very, very deeply encouraged. And I must say, I was lucky to share with you sometimes praying, and I was always so elevated. My soul was so elevated when uh, you would sing, you would pray. I have forever uh, in my heart moments we shared, for example, in uh, Belgium, in, in Brussels, where we gathered an interface um, gathering and uh, 
you had been praying and for me it was honestly a, a dream come true and uh, and it's uh, it goes very far an example like yours and thank you so much because I'm sure it doesn't go necessarily with no opposition I'm sure there there has been and uh, there is maybe still in your life some some uh, counter force let's say uh, to this incredible power so thank you so much thank you so much we are so indebted to you for for this path of life you have ch chosen it's it's really beautiful thank you thank you and um, i hope it shows to our audience that again um you know that's my feeling and i don't know how you feel about the tempo but uh, when we talked about gender equality in france for a long time there were very separate subjects you know there was the spiritual life and that was kind of an area that feminism had not even touched was not wanting to look at it because feminists in france like simone de beauvoir and others they were considering that religions were such patriarchal forms of relationship to the world that they didn't want to address it and they kept their fight in the not non-spiritual world you know for gender equality that women would have equal pay equal rights in terms of facing the law and so on and so forth and it came to my mind a couple of years ago that if feminism was going to stop at the doors of mosques, of um, synagogues, of churches, of temples, that was going to be very dangerous because it meant that the work of equality for the human race had not uh, been fully accomplished. And uh, I think it's interesting that we are given the floor here in a diplomatic school, academia, university, uh, where I suppose spirituality is maybe not always touched on and that we can bring to the consciousness of all the diplomats in the making who are uh, here in the audience that there is a big impact also inside the spiritual communities, the spiritual world. Uh, what's happening inside of it does impact the outside, so to speak, world. And that we cannot neglect bringing gender equality uh, inside the spiritual spheres. I think. Um, it's so important, you know, at the moment we all have these images of the Pope visiting Iraq for the moment, you know, and I look at these pictures, you know, where you only see men uh, together, uh, whole assemblies with no women or the odd little dancer, you know, welcoming in the welcome committee. And um, I'm so much hoping this is going to change. and. Um, and and the whole new generations of people who are here with us, these young people who are in charge inside the UN and are taking active roles, uh, that they they shake this world, so to speak, so that um, we achieve this gender um, mixed, this gender harmony, you know, this empowerment of everyone not leaving aside half of humanity and feeling it's all right you know it's okay we can we can continue like this and you know i mean for me especially with christ inside our hearts uh, i love this quote from romain gary that christ is the first man who spoke with the voice of a woman <laughs> i i kind of like that because I feel that Christ is the epitome of someone who was not gender biased, who was not rejecting women, who was empowering women. So it's such an irony that we have shuffled whole hierarchies and, and uh, systems that have excluded women uh, from the core. So 
I, I'm very glad that this conference allows us, thanks to your presence, Impo, to um, to show the way, so to speak, you know, and to to make things change and progress, really. Yeah. And I can see lots of reactions in the chat. Uh, some people uh, are starting to to talk about Luther in church, pastors, and of course there are lights in the darkness. <laughs> there are. Hmm. I don't know, Empo, if you would like to react on on this. Um, I, you know, I I think that um, we have as a world, and we have particularly in the West. Um, a, a, a way of um, atomizing causes of um, of of making um, each issue uh, a, a separate issue um, that that um, we have gender justice and racial justice and um, disability justice and each of these is its own thing uh, when the reality is that um, that all of these are are a single thing either we live in a world that is just and fair um, and inclusive or we don't um, and as long as there is exclusion anywhere in the world, then we cannot claim to live in a world that is fully inclusive and, and is fully equal. Um, we, we have seen the impact of the Holy Father's visit to Iraq now, um, the 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 joy that it has brought, the opportunity for conversations that have not been held in the past, the the um, the the sense that this too is a place that has faced a devastation that has been unspoken. Um, you know, our our eyes um, are constantly turned to the to the seat of the empire. Um, you know, how, how many hundreds of Americans were killed yesterday, today, tomorrow, um, with no attention to how many thousands of Iraqis were killed yesterday, today, tomorrow, what has been the devastation in that country, what has been the impact on women's lives, what has been the impact on the lives of children, how is it that, um, you know, that, that, that this has been experienced in 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 that part of the world as opposed to um in the you know in in what is currently um the center of the universe um or you know kind of the the geopolitical center of the universe um and and so we see that that um our spiritual communities have the opportunity to have a huge impact on what happens in the world, how the world is seen, and how how it is that we um, that we live together, um, and so um, we we are really required um, as people of faith to challenge our faith communities to exhibit the same justice. Um, that they call on the world community to exhibit. So you can't have um, one set of rules uh, for the political sphere and then another set of rules for the spiritual sphere. And, and we as people of faith um, are, are very often angered when um, when people say, well, you know, this is a political thing, it's not a spiritual thing, um, well, you know, don't, don't mix religion and politics. Um, as religious people, we say, uh, no, actually, there is no part of life that doesn't belong to God. Um, but and and yet, when we come into the spiritual realm, realm, we say, "Well, don't bring your politics into the church," um, as though, yeah, that that this place 
um, is uh, is a, a place apart from our life experience. Um, and yet it is very much, and for, for very many people in the world, um, it is the center of their life experience. This is where we make meaning of, of our lives. And so um, the, the notion of, of that separation between how we live our lives outside our spiritual um, communities and how we live our lives inside our spiritual communities um, um, must be the same thing. They, they must be able to, to be in deep conversation with each other. Otherwise, our spiritual communities are dead places. Um, they are desert zones that have absolutely no relevance in, um, in our lives. And so why bother going? Um, why, why bother participating? Um, and, uh, and that it, it is absolutely crucial um, that, that the, the values that we say underpin um, our, uh, our society are, are values that are transparently present both in our spiritual religious experience and in our political social experience. Thank you so much, Mpo. It, it makes a lot of sense and it's, it's really beautiful to hear you. And I feel so grateful for the community of diplomats who are here because um, you're talking to a, no, a nation. A lot of people here are from France and where we have separated, as you know, the church from the state. And how to say, um, it's always a big challenge for every one of us to reconcile the two spheres that you mentioned, the spiritual and the temporal, let's call it like that, and um, to make a synthesis where there is harmony, where there is meaning and, um, and coherence. And um, it's, a, it's a great uh, challenge. It's a great challenge for a lot of us. And I think, again, you embody a fantastic uh, harmony that we all would like to, to achieve. So thank you so much for enlightening us. It's, it's very precious. And that brings as well a little focus that I'm glad to, to bring to the table as well, because, you know, amongst the seven women in France who have tried to shake the Roman Catholic Church, uh, different, uh, each of us has applied for an official function, which is to this day forbidden to, for women. So some of us applied to become a bishop, some of us applied to become a deacon, and uh, I applied to become an apostolic nuncio, uh, which is, as you know, uh, an, uh, well, a diplomat for the Holy See. Uh, why did I do that? Because actually when I was 14, I was a school uh, girl and in a Catholic uh, college and I visited Rome and I discovered that there was any such thing as a religious diplomat, so to speak. And I thought, oh, fantastic. I can have the diplomatic career that I've always dreamt of plus the spiritual dimension, you know. So for me, it was amazing because I was no longer going to have to become the diplomat of a state, but the diplomat of the Prince of Peace, so to speak, you know, which was like an incredible dream. And uh, I talked about it to my parish priest and he looked at me and he said, but Helen, you know, this is impossible. And I said, well, how is this impossible? And he said, well, because you're a girl. So that came to me for the first time when I was 14, that if I was a boy or if I was a girl, I was not going to have the same options in life, you know, and I, some doors were going to be closed and I didn't accept it. Inside of me, I felt it was not legitimate to do that because there were no grounds to uh, validate, so to speak, this form. And 
uh, that's why I feel that what you you've just talked about, you know, about diplomacy and about the impact of having a wholesome vision of humanity with no uh, gender, um, let's say, no gender exclusion, and also no ha having the capacity, as you said, to give as much price to any life, an Iraqi life, uh, an African life, as, as much price as, as you said, an American life, a Western life, and so on and so forth. I mean, this is all the same kind of approach, as you said, if you give equal value to any life, then you're on the good path of peace, of respect, of love universally, you know, um, in the diplomatic world. And, and um, this is why what you are saying here for me as well is uh, one more um, element to bring to the fact that there is no reason why there wouldn't be uh, diplomats who are working for the Holy See, who uh, are we women, you know, why wouldn't there be women representing the Holy See in the world? So um, I don't know how it works in the uh, Anglican world. I mean, do they have also uh, a diplomats or not, or it is the different representatives of the church who are doing diplomatic talk in between nations? So unlike the unlike the um, Roman Catholic Church, the um, the the Anglican Church doesn't have a state, um, so it it doesn't um, it doesn't have an, an an independent state function. So we don't we don't have diplomats um, in in that in the same manner as as the as does the Holy See. Uh, so, Info, uh, another question. Uh, do you feel the 17 SDGs are honestly achievable or are they a mere dream out of reach? And uh, what do you recommend we can to do to take humanity as close as possible to reaching this goal? Um, the, the SDGs are um, actually eminently achievable. It's all a matter of how much of a commitment do we have to achieving them. Um, and I think the, the underpinning um, SDG is 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 the one that that calls for equality for women, um, because once you um, a, a achieve equality for women and um, equal access to opportunity for women, um, all of the other ones um, become eminently more achievable. Um, that 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 each of the other ones. Um, falls much better into place. Um, you can't you can't tackle poverty without tackling um, the status of women. You can't tackle climate change without tackling the status of women. You can't tackle education without tackling the status of women. And so each of the each of the other SDGs really does hang on. Um, and, and on addressing the status of women and, and our lack of willingness to address the status of women becomes our lack of willingness to achieve the SDGs. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. So much. Hélène, uh, where do you steal blockage? And um, what are your advices to change the world to make it a better place for all of us? Well, as uh, as Import just has been highlighting, everything is deeply interconnected. 
And I have, as I told you, focused a lot, and I think it's going to be the focus of all my life, trying to empower women, especially in the spiritual spheres. I feel uh, this is going to be the key for the next century, that each time you can see a woman uh, who is able to step forward in her community, you are spiritual community, I mean, you are definitely taking care suddenly of everyone much better, including men. Uh, I feel this is so important uh, to realize this and to make it happen. Uh, in the Roman Catholic Church, it's not an easy road as uh, we have highlighted, and that's why we have decided to become much more visible to take uh, serious steps. Uh, we have created an association. We are trying to pull and share with lots of uh, women uh, around the world uh, who can give us tools, who can give us ways and good practices so to achieve this. Uh, also, I always try to um, embark with me each time I'm giving the opportunity to speak on any panel, a women, like when I spoke in La Sorbonne, I asked Karina Baloul, who is one of the first woman imam in France to come and speak with me. And she was so eloquent and so beautiful that uh, she took the heart away of everyone. And uh, another opportunity last 8th of March, I asked obviously Anne Soupa, but also Florian Chansky, who is a, a woman uh, rabbi, uh, to speak as well. And again, it's always extraordinary to be able to the different spiritual families express themselves also through the feminine. It's, um, it's always an incredible discovery because there is an addition of sensitivity of uh, perspective it's like you know opening a hundred percent view uh, of of any scene you know whereas before you realize you were only limited to half of the vision so uh, th this is the kind of uh, of way i would see to clear some blockage uh, in the psyche of humans um, to achieve these SDGs. Because again, if you are able to um, embrace really uh, all humans in an adventure, whichever adventure, then you're going to achieve really what you want because you are really giving yourself the greater chances uh, to do that and not to hurt anyone, not to leave anyone aside, not to, uh, uh, let's say, um, limitate, you know, the perspective. So um, that's basically uh, how I would see to clear the blockages. And um, I know it's maybe not exactly the time to to deal with this, but I would like to say a little something, you know, uh, terrorism has been still an incredible burden on humanity. And acts of terrorism have all shocked us in France and other nations around the world in the coming, in the last few years. And you realize that often terrorism finds its roots in some kind of very uh, how would you say, uh, obviously more than limited, but incredibly intolerant vision of the world. And obviously you can see that if you are going to bring uh, equality, gender equality, tolerance, acceptance of everyone inside every creed, then you are obviously going to uh, eradicate uh, also the roots of terrorism. This is my feeling, and it's also why I would uh, I am going that far into this fight for equality gender inside religious families, because I think it's a way to eradicate any form of intolerance from the heart of spiritual families. 
Thank you so much, uh, Ellen. Um, another question for Empo. Empo, um, along the course of your life, what has been your biggest driving force to bring change into the world? And would it be possible to scale it up at the level of humanity so we can all make this world a safer and happier place? I, I'm, I'm not fully sure how to answer the second question. Um, I, uh, I, I came to parenthood quite late. I was uh, in my 30s um, by the time my first child was born. Um, but I do vividly remember um, looking at this beautiful baby and thinking, oh my goodness, this world isn't good enough for you. Um, and I have really the, the, the thought that came immediately next to the thought of this world isn't good enough for you um, was, well, if it's not good enough for, for my child, whose child do I think it's good enough for? Um, and I have lived from that commitment and that recognition that um, there, there isn't a child in the world who when I look at how we live in this world and how we um, use and abuse this world that, that I can say, um, you know, well, it's good enough, it's good enough for that child. It's just not good enough for my child. Um, there, there isn't a child in the world who I think um, we have um, have served in the way that we are ruling the world, in the way that we are handling this world. Um, the the multiple crises. Um, for for people who who face hunger and famine and refugee cri refugee flows and so on, um, those are the obvious side of um, how ineptly we are handling um, our world community. Um, but the other side of how ineptly we're handling our world community is um, is is looking at those who inflict the harm and the pain and the trauma on the coming generation, and asking ourselves, well, what did we do to them? What what happened to those people um, to make it permissible for them to to become um, to become terrorists, yes, but to to think that it's okay to go and drop bombs on another nation. Um, who, what, what, what piece of your soul has been poisoned um, that, that you can, um, that you can look at a city and say, oh, okay, well, it's fine. I can go and drop a bomb over there. Um, and, and so, there is a way of, um, you know, how how are we raising a new generation of people who um, who experience uh, safety and security in their homes, who experience um, joy and love in their homes and in their communities who experience ex, um, uh, honor and dignity wherever in the world that they walk. And it is only when, when that is the reality and the expectation for every one of us um, that, that we can really say we have achieved the world that is um, in in my language, that is God's dream for the world. Um, that that God's dream for our world um, isn't that some of us can sit 
comfortably and know where our next meal is coming from and um, walk out on the street and feel safe in walking. Um, God's dream for us is that all of us can know where our next meal comes from, can experience um, walking out on the street and not being worried that because of my gender or because of my race or because of the my religious identity that I am going to be harassed or I am in danger in some way. Um, and, and, and so that's, you know, kind of where, um, where my commitment has come from and what, and what sustains that commitment um, is, is a belief that God has a dream for our world and that we get to participate in creating that dream and in having um, a way of, of seeing that embodied in my children and now my grandchildren that, yeah, I want, I want the world to look for you the way that God dreams the world. And how is it that I do my part in creating that? And is that, you know, from the most um, intimate interactions of being able to say, I love you and I admire you and I'm proud of you, that, that which are words that our children need so desperately to hear from us. Um, so, you know, the, um, we, we, we forget in a way as, as parents, how much our children crave our love and admiration. Um, uh, and that, you know, that, that when we screw up and we know we've screwed up, that we can dare to say, I'm sorry. Um, and dare to say it even to our children. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, you know, I did that wrong or I got that wrong. Um, because the, the parent who can say, I'm sorry to a child, um, is the parent who really is a giant in their child's eyes. Um, that that you know that you're brave enough to say to me when you've got it wrong, um, but that also grows a child who um, who can own up, who who can dare to own up to 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 what is um, what is failing in them, but who also can dare to lay claim to their own greatness, and that is what we need in the world. What beautiful words. Thank you so much, Impo. Thank you, thank you. Such a blessing. Yes, yes. So, so beautiful words. Thank you so much. And what about you, Ellen? Well, I'm standing in awe of everything that um, Empo has just said. It's divine, gorgeous. It's everything that Empo is saying is. Um, is highlighting exactly uh, what I hope to encourage in this world. That is, uh, you know, the words that Empo has just expressed about how to look and to talk to our children, to all the children of the world. Uh, to me, this is the embodiment of this spiritual leadership of women that I feel the world is craving for, is so in need of. And um, this, this is, there is not anything I would like to add to this, but only to encourage as much as possible uh, words and embodiment uh, like those of Empos to be able to make their way through in humanity, to be listened to, to be heard, to reach, uh, you know, the heart of each and every one of us that we can reassert these essentials and that we can live them to the full, that we can be these humans, uh, that we can be the change we want to see in this world, you know, to quote on uh, Gandhi, and be the love, uh, that we should be better humans, that uh, to be able to, we have first of all to be better I or better we, to achieve a better world. And I think this is 
our common endeavor and in, in the diplomatic world whom we are addressing today, I think there is this incredible dream that there would be no wars, that there would be no domination of some people over others, that there would be dialogue, there would be common, um, you know, common enrichment and interface dialogue, intercultural dialogue, international dialogue, uh, multi, uh, multi-polarity around, you know, that the richness of this humanity can be really fully uh, known and, and not exploited, but known and shared, and that we can all take care of each other uh, the way that Empo has just worded it. It's just, to me, uh, absolutely beautiful. And I hope each and every one of us can be the echo of that voice and that we can definitely bring uh, to the new generations, to our children, a world that is more and more caring and uh, attentive to the people who are the weakest, who are the most vulnerable, and that we can really take pride in each time that we can raise somebody and we can um, empower somebody who would have been left aside. So this is really my, my reaction to this, uh, to this question, Florence. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Elena. Um, heartfelt thanks to Empo and uh, Elena uh, for your generosity uh, in sharing hope and light with our listeners. And um, in this difficult period, we need women like you. What pride to have welcomed you to this conference of our university. So uh, for finish this wonderful event, uh, this amazing event with amazing women, <laughs> we give the floor to Evan, the Minister of Women, Labidi Nezia, uh, who will make the, the conclusion of this morning. Um, she was a party Minister of Women, Families and Children in the government of Yusuf Shahed. She passed a law against violence against women and the text trains the protection of women against all violence and in particular removes the possibility for the perpetrator of a sexual act with a minor to escape persecution by marrying his victim. Uh, she is amending on this point article 227 bis and this article uh, was very controversial of the Tunisian penal code. Uh, so welcome, Labidi Nezia. Uh, welcome. You you speak in French. It's not a problem. We can translate for Hempo. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I I uh, I let you um, I let you speak. Uh, bonjour. Euh, merci beaucoup. Euh, je suis réellement très heureuse d'être parmi vous et je souhaite euh, une excellente journée internationale de la femme. Et euh, je tiens à remercier euh, les instituts qui ont contribué à nous permettre de nous réunir et surtout l'architecte de cette réunion, euh, Laurence Gabi. Euh, je crois que euh, aujourd'hui on est réunis. Il y a des hommes, je vois. Il y a des femmes. Nous sommes des femmes de générations différentes, de couleurs différentes. Nous sommes aussi euh, de religions, de cultures différentes. Mais ce qui nous réunit et nous unit aujourd'hui, c'est notre humanité. Et parce que nous croyons en notre humanité et que tout le reste n'est que euh, euh, le fait. Euh, de géographique ou historique, mais euh, le fondement de notre euh, existence est réellement notre euh, euh, notre mmh. humanité et euh, croire en nos droits humains, quelles que soient euh, nos religions, nos couleurs, l'endroit où on se trouve, euh, la situation économique, sociale, etc. Et donc ça, 
je considère que c'est quelque chose d'extraordinaire, d'abord, euh, pour cette, cette réunion. Et d'autre part, euh, je crois qu'on est trois euh, générations. Euh, Faux, euh, elle est euh, d'une génération. Euh, Hélène aussi, elle est, elle est, euh, est peut-être plus jeune, beaucoup plus jeune que moi. Euh, et je suis bon, d'une génération qui a côtoyé, j'ai eu la chance de côtoyer euh, Madame... Euh, Gisèle Halimi en 72 et également Madame Simone Veil à Paris. J'étais encore élève et euh, on était euh, vraiment porté pour les droits humains des femmes et lutter contre toutes les formes de euh, discrimination à l'égard, euh, à l'encontre des femmes. Et je crois que ce que vous venez de dire, euh, tout euh, va dans le sens que euh, le combat, euh, je dirais réellement qu'il y a un combat aujourd'hui pour euh, euh, retrouver la dignité humaine. Parce que je constate déjà pendant cette dernière année 2020, il y a euh, réellement un recul, euh, puisque je suis également dans la société civile aujourd'hui, je représente euh, IPAS, qui est l'Institut euh, international des études euh, stratégiques avancées, je suis la vice-présidente, et donc... Euh, ce que nous constatons qu'il y a vraiment un recul des droits humains des femmes et que les femmes sont vraiment très, euh, mmh. très fragiles et que leurs droits sont très fragiles, très fragiles. Euh, vous avez parlé de l'enfance, vous avez parlé des jeunes, vous avez parlé de l'immigration et vous avez parlé aussi des guerres et, et, et de la discrimination à travers le cycle de vie. Moi, j'étais... Euh, ministre des, je dirais, euh, ministre de la vie, puisque j'avais euh, sous ma responsabilité les quatre euh, euh, portefeuilles, femmes, famille, euh, euh, enfance et senior. Et donc, euh, j'ai pu constater euh, de réels problèmes, de réels défis, mais face à mmh. ces défis, mmh. il fallait agir et réagir. Et vous venez tout à l'heure de parler de la loi 58 de lutte contre la violence faite aux femmes. Cette loi a classé la Tunisie comme étant le 19e pays à mettre en place cette loi de lutte contre la violence et le premier pays au monde à intégrer la violence politique. Et je suis réellement très fière de l'avoir euh, d'avoir lutté euh, pour euh, intégrer euh, cette, euh, disons, euh, cette violence, parce que personne ne, ne parlait de cette violence, ne croyait en cette violence, mmh. et mmh. on a réussi à le faire. D'autre part, euh, euh, j'ai réussi, bon, je réussis, pas toute seule, mais vraiment euh, 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 grâce à l'appui de la société civile, des, des formations politiques des, du Parlement, pour euh, faire évoluer euh, le, le consentement, si vous voulez, sexuel, ou la majorité euh, sexuelle de 13 ans à 16 ans, qui était vraiment euh, un défi énorme dans un contexte où euh, il y a euh, un recul des droits euh, des femmes. Et quand on parle euh, de femmes, de complémentarité, et on ne parle pas d'égalité, c'était vraiment un défi énorme à, à, à faire. Mmh, et d'autre part, mmh. faire passer euh, le protocole de Mopoto sur les droits humains des femmes, où et on parle de, dans ce protocole de l'égalité, dans l'héritage de beaucoup d'égalité. Donc, c'était vraiment des défis à relever. Et euh, euh, je crois que euh, c'est des pas qui ont été euh, réalisés. Et aujourd'hui, je fais euh, l'évaluation de ce qui a été réalisé et de ce qui se passe aujourd'hui. Je crois que euh, le, le, le problème n'est plus tellement un problème euh, tunisien, mais un problème universel qui touche toutes les femmes d'une façon ou d'une autre. Parce qu'aujourd'hui, nous, on a la possibilité de discuter à travers le, les webinaires. Mais est-ce que les femmes rurales, est-ce que les femmes dans les quartiers populaire Est-ce que les femmes euh, habitant dans des endroits euh, éloignés peuvent, déjà elles ne savent pas écrire et lire, est-ce qu'elles ont mmh, aujourd'hui mmh. la possibilité de parler, de discuter, de revendiquer leurs droits mmh, à mmh. travers euh, l'espace 
virtuel. C'est toute cette question qui me préoccupe. Et d'autre part, ce qui me préoccupe également, c'est que est vraiment l'enfance aujourd'hui, avec euh, ce qui se passe dans le monde, et euh, surtout, moi je parle de, de notre, de notre euh, euh, sphère, euh, si vous voulez, dans le monde arabe et euh, en Afrique, parce que euh, je suis africaine euh, par... Euh, par ma naissance et par la situation géographique de la Tunisie. Et je considère que euh, la stratégie de l'Union africaine 2063 euh, va de pair avec les objectifs, les 17 objectifs du, du, euh, des développements durables et l'objectif 5 surtout pour arriver à l'égalité absolue entre femmes et hommes. Euh, euh, toutes euh, ces questions, euh, euh, je ne vous, vous cache pas mes préoccupations euh, envers l'enfance. Parce qu'aujourd'hui, euh, euh, avec la montée de l'intégrisme, avec la montée euh, de, euh, de l'islamisation euh, de, de la société d'une façon générale, on est face à une marginalisation de l'enfance. Et cette enfance qui est le devenir de l'humanité est euh, aujourd'hui n'a pas euh, la chance, euh, surtout pendant cette période 2020, pendant une année, et une année c'est énorme, c'est beaucoup, parce que pendant cette année où on est cloîtrés, nous tous et toutes, et surtout les enfants qui ont besoin de respirer, qui ont besoin de jouer, qui ont besoin de rencontrer d'autres enfants, de vivre des expériences, ils se trouvent euh, cloîtrés, et je vous dis que euh, mes préoccupations euh, premières réellement euh, sont basées sur l'enfance et euh, je mets tous mes efforts aujourd'hui sur l'enfance bien sûr, les femmes, les seniors euh, et euh, les, euh, toutes les catégories sociales mais je trouve que bon, pour euh, avoir un devenir meilleur il faut préparer euh, euh, les enfants et surtout euh, se focaliser sur la petite enfance parce que les études démontrent que les euh, mille jours, euh, premiers jours de notre mmh, existence mmh. sont déterminants. Et donc, euh, la petite enfance est importante. Quand on leur apprend euh, 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 qu'est-ce que c'est que le respect euh, des droits humains des uns et des autres, quand on apprend aux enfants euh, que euh, euh, les droits de chacun euh, et que on, malgré notre différence, cette différence, elle est, c'est un, une richesse extraordinaire parce que personne ne détient la vérité et personne ne, euh, 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 comment dire, et, et personne ne, ne peut être euh, euh, leader si on n'est pas ensemble, si on ne se tend pas les mains les uns avec les autres et que si on n'est pas hum, respectueux de chacun d'entre nous et que notre existence ne peut évoluer, ne peut s'épanouir et ne peut s'enrichir qu'avec l'autre. Mmh. Et je, je vous dis très honnêtement, moi j'ai fait mes études, une partie de mes études secondaires, d'abord mmh. naissant à Tunis, euh, J'étais euh, élevée dans un quartier à Franceville où il y avait la communauté juive, il y avait mmh, une église, mmh, il y avait une synagogue, mmh, mmh. il y avait une mosquée. Et donc on se fréquentait, on s'aimait, on n'avait pas de problème ni de religion, ni de couleur, ni de quoi que ce soit. Et puis quand j'étais dans un lycée à Paris, j j je côtoyais euh, des filles de toutes les nationalités, de toutes les religions, et nous, nous étions très heureuses et très ravis de, nous, de, de partager nos expériences mutuelles. Et aujourd'hui, euh, je constate qu'il y a un retour vers euh, le… on, on s'enferme et les gens s'enferment sur eux-mêmes de plus en plus. Euh, et bien sûr, je, je dirais qu'on ne peut avancer aujourd'hui qu'en étant ensemble, d'abord hommes et femmes, et également euh, euh, des personnes humaines de toute, euh, toute l'humanité, et euh, euh, mettant euh, devant nous ces principes que nous sommes d'abord des êtres humains, nous avons des droits, et euh, je considère que les droits humains sont indivisibles, et euh, la parité ou l'égalité elle est indivisible. On ne peut pas euh, dire qu'il y a des droits humains pour les hommes, 
pour les femmes, pour l'enfant, pour etc. etc. Et c'est pour ça que quand j'ai travaillé au ministère, j'avais toujours comme vision et comme, euh, 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 comment dire, euh, euh, j'ai toujours dit qu'on on, on doit porter euh, un, un message qui est, celui, euh, qui est celui-ci. Elle et lui pour nous tous. Et c'est comme ça qu'on peut avancer parce que quand je vois des hommes avec nous aujourd'hui, je me dis, euh, eux et nous, on va euh, travailler, on va avancer euh, la main dans la main et qu'il n'y a pas de conflit entre hommes et femmes, mais plutôt euh, une solidarité qui doit euh, se... Euh... Allô Vous m'entendez Et, et donc, il y a une solidarité humaine entre nous qui doit euh, se réaliser. J'espère que je ne me suis pas, euh, je, je ne me, je, je me suis pas accaparée de la parole. Ben, j'attends vos, vos réactions, si vous voulez. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Ministre, pour euh, des paroles aussi, aussi belles et aussi puissantes. Thank you so much. Bonjour. Si vous Bonjour. avez des questions euh, mmh. ou des réactions, je suis euh, là pour vous, vous écouter et pour répondre parce que euh, c'est important de, d'écouter aussi euh, des, des questions sur euh, pas mal de sujets. Allô, bonjour. Je peux poser une question à madame la ministre Oui. Vous m'entendez euh, oui, est-ce que vous pouvez élever un petit peu la voix Oui, euh, vous m'entendez Oui, oui, oui. Et vous, vous m'entendez oui. oui, je vous entends parfaitement, Madame le Ministre. Oui. Ok, je, je, je vous remercie. Je suis, euh, je suis Ted Azuma. Euh, je travaille pour euh, l'Institut national des administrateurs de Côte d'Ivoire. Euh, merci en tout cas pour cette présentation. Alors, la question que j'aimerais vous poser, c'est pour, euh, c'est pour savoir exactement, de façon concrète, euh, vous avez dit que vous mettez l'accent sur euh, la petite enfance, euh, mais quelles sont les actions que vous vous avez pu mener dans votre pays pour que cela puisse servir de bonne pratique pour tous ceux qui sont sur cette plateforme. Est-ce que vous avez mis un accent sur la scolarisation Est-ce que vous mettez plutôt l'accent sur la santé Ou bien vous mettez plutôt l'accent sur l'alimentation, la sécurité alimentaire et que faites-vous, par exemple, dans le domaine de la sécurité de ces enfants Parce que euh, moi, je suis souvent écorché, euh, vif même, euh, parce qu'il y a beaucoup d'enfants qui subissent des violences, et surtout des, des petites filles qui subissent des violences. Alors, mm-hmm. quelles sont les mesures euh, euh, que vous avez pu prendre et, et, et qu'est-ce que vous entendez faire euh, de mieux à la à l'avenir. Merci. Alors, excusez-moi, bah, je vous propose... Merci monsieur... beaucoup pour votre euh, question. Euh, c'est vrai, pendant mon mandat, la Tunisie a adhéré à la convention Lanzarote qui concerne les violences sexuelles à l'encontre des, des enfants. C'est une, c'est une convention euh, très importante et aussi aujourd'hui, on est en train de mettre en place le plan euh, euh, exécutif si vous voulez, de cette, de cette convention. Euh, euh, et d'autre part, euh, on a euh, mis en place un plan d'action, une stratégie nationale pour la petite enfance. Euh, 
euh, elle consiste à euh, d'abord euh, consacrer euh, une euh, stratégie pour euh, l'intégration euh, de la petite enfance dans les jardins d'enfants, euh, parce que c'est important d'intégrer les enfants dans les jardins d'enfants et euh, pousser, on avait euh, demandé à l'État de euh, contribuer euh, à euh, l'intégration des enfants dans les jardins d'enfants. Et quand j'ai pris mon mandat en 2016, on avait seulement 2800 enfants qui bénéficiaient de l'aide de l'État, à raison de 25 dinars, c'est-à-dire euh, à peu près euh, 10 euros par euh, mois, quelque chose qui était euh, ridicule et quelque chose qui était euh, très, très simple. Donc on est passé de, euh, en 2016 de 2800 enfants à 10 000 en 2020. Donc, vous voyez, la courbe est assez importante. D'autre part, concernant les violences, quelles qu'elles soient, euh, sexuelles ou violences physiques ou violences morales, maintenant on parle de violences à travers les, les, les sites web, à travers l'espace le, le, cybernétique. Donc, il y a euh, une, des campagnes de sensibilisation, euh, des lois qui, sont, qui verront le jour pour limiter l'utilisation des, euh, des, comment dire, des, des sites euh, Internet et euh, faire le suivi euh, par les parents euh, à travers une plateforme qui permet aux parents de suivre euh, leurs enfants quand ils rentrent euh, en contact avec les, les internautes et dans les, euh, les, les, les espaces, euh, si vous voulez, virtuels. Euh, D'autre part, nous avons créé toute un, un, une licence spécifique pour la petite enfance, parce que euh, l'éducation de, de la petite enfance est assez spécifique et donc euh, c'est toute une pédagogie, c'est toute une science qui touche la petite enfance. Donc euh, ça fait deux ans qu'on a commencé euh, cette euh, licence et euh, un certificat, bien sûr, après trois années, sera délivré aux éducateurs qui seront spécialisés dans la petite enfance. Bien sûr, il y a beaucoup de choses euh, qui seront euh, mises en œuvre pour protéger la petite enfance, mais euh, vous savez, euh, aujourd'hui, euh, je, je suis très franche et très claire, aujourd'hui, la situation économique, sociale et politique en Tunisie euh, est un peu, euh, disons, euh, pas euh, tout à fait stable pour dire que euh, les choses vont euh, merveilleusement bien. Mais cela ne veut pas dire que nous, en tant qu'aujourd'hui, bon, je ne suis plus ministre, mais cela, euh, euh, cela m'engage davantage euh, de travailler dans la société civile pour appuyer euh, d'abord les, progr les programmes vis-à-vis euh, -vis de l'enfance et également trouver d'autres créneaux avec des institutions euh, autres comme l'UNICEF avec euh, euh, l'institution à laquelle j'appartiens qui est IPAS de mettre en place de nouvelles stratégies de nouvelles visions pour protéger davantage les enfants et l'enfance d'une façon générale c'est quelque chose maintenant euh, qui est vraiment, moi je, je suis très préoccupée, pas seulement pour aujourd'hui, mais je suis préoccupée pour les générations futures. Et donc c'est pour ça que je suis très engagée euh, dans la, dans, pour, la, pour les enfants. Et euh, prochainement, j'espère qu'avec d'autres euh, personnalités à travers le monde, nous allons créer un mouvement pour l'enfance. Je ne peux pas le, vous, vous le révéler parce qu'il est en, en voie de création, mais on, on y travaille et, et je crois qu'il verra le jour dans quelques, dans quelques semaines ou peut-être dans un mois ou deux. Je crois que j'ai répondu un peu, quelque part, à votre question. Oui, Madame le ministre, c'est très bien. Merci beaucoup et bonne continuation. Merci. Merci à vous.
vous savez, aujourd'hui, euh, euh, puisque on, on, on est au, dans une plateforme de l'Union africaine aussi, vous savez que 2020 devait être l'année où les armes devaient se taire. Malheureusement, les armes ne se sont pas tues. Elles se sont, euh, en, euh, comment on veut dire, euh, il y a plus de guerres, il y a plus, il y a plus de, de conflits, il y a plus de, euh, de, de réfugiés et d'enfants qui n'ont qui pas d'identité, qui n'ont pas d'abri, de, 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 qui n'ont pas de lieu où ils vivent. Et donc, moi, je considère qu'en euh, plus, de, 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 des questions qu'on a soulevées. Je considère qu'aujourd'hui, euh, euh, on doit travailler ensemble sur euh, la paix et la sécurité et le rôle des femmes dans la paix et la sécurité. Et je crois que la, le, euh, la résolution 1325 et toutes les résolutions qui, sont, qui ont suivi, en plus la, résolu, la résolution, je crois, 52, euh, qui était adressée pour les jeunes, aujourd'hui, euh, euh, on doit... Euh, en tant que société internationale, euh, travailler sur ces résolutions euh, pour permettre d'abord aux femmes d'être présentes dans les résolutions des conflits et également dans les forces de, euh, des, euh, des guerres et aussi euh, euh, être présente. Moi, j'avais euh, organisé une conférence à, à la Sorbonne en 2018 euh, sur « Femmes, paix et sécurité ». Et on avait euh, parlé de cinq, euh, cinq recommandations. Entre autres, euh, appeler les fabricants d'armes de, de, à venir s'asseoir avec nous, les femmes leaders, et discuter comment euh, euh, contribuer, au lieu de contribuer à fabriquer de nouvelles armes et de nouvelles manières de détruire, comment on peut euh, euh, avoir un, euh, des, des moyens des fonds pour l'éducation, pour les universités, pour Ma la santé, Madame pour la ministre, euh, Madame la ministre, les, les seniors et les personnes âgées. Parce que Ma vous savez, aujourd'hui, on Madame utilise ministre, les personnes âgées comme moyen de guerre. Les seniors et les personnes âgées, on les utilise dans les, euh, comme moyen de guerre, on les utilise aussi dans les, le terrorisme. On leur dit, vous êtes en fin de vie, vous allez rencontrer Dieu et vous allez aller au paradis. Donc, vous voyez, il y a beaucoup de, de, de petites choses qu'on qu peut faire ensemble et que vraiment sur lesquelles on, doit, euh, on peut se pencher ensemble. Merci, Madame la Ministre. Est-ce que vous m'entendez Tout le monde m'entend oui. Oui, oui, oui. Merci infiniment. On, on pourrait parler évidemment des heures de ce sujet. Là, nous devons évidemment conclure hein, parce que MPO a d'autres conférences, d'autres événements. MPO, you being an international star, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your humility and kindness to give uh, to our listeners. Uh, thank you, Hélène. Thank you for giving hope through your fight in the continuity of the immense Desmond Tutu uh, work and um, uh, life. And uh, I leave you the last word, uh, Empo. I leave you the last word. Um, thank you so much. I am... Um, truly honored to have shared the platform um, with uh, with both with Elena and with um, Labidine Ziha, uh, with the minister. Thank you, minister, for your courage and for your work um, for, for safety for women and girls um, and for bodily integrity, um, which are such crucial Um, pieces of allowing us to truly flourish in the world. Um, I thank each of you for for being here and for um, having the patience to 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 listen to what I had to to offer today. Um, and I hope that um, that you each of you in your own way in your own life um, are able to live a commitment to the sustainable development goals and to really live a commitment to true equality, um, equal access to opportunity for all of us, equal access to flourishing for all of us. And I bless all of you. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. This event is very important for CEDS, very important for COSCOC. Thank you very much to Jackie Pamar for the partnership with the United Nations. And uh, for CEDS, we train diplomats. And this fight uh, for women will also be there. Uh, we are here, the Professor Fouad Nora, mm -hmm. our Director of Studies, Uh, professor of French University, um, uh, Fouad, you can you can conclude with uh, uh, one word uh, about the importance <laughs> of this conference for our university. Fouad, you are here. Professor, you are here. Okay, <laughs> uh, so uh, he's not here. Ok. Euh, ok. Hélène, tu veux conclure Tu veux dire un mot et puis je te laisse dire au revoir à tout le monde et conclure. Oui, well, thank you so much, Florence. Just to thank you from all my heart, thanking Empo for a wonderful uh, message and presence into our world. Thank you so much. We feel very blessed. Thank you, Florence, for all your work as well to have women shine today and to help us walk the talk. Okay. So, ah, so okay. Much. I see the professor Nora. Thank you can you. say one word, one word for uh, explain the importance of this conference for CEDS and for diplomats. Thanks. Uh, just um, I, I don't want to be long because I'm I'm not specialist in the subject and I am a man. But uh, just to, to, te to tell you the, the relevance of the cause of women uh, in the present times because. Since the beginning of the 20th century, it has been a, a long struggle since uh, uh, just 1917 in Russia, in, in uh, when when the or 1918 with um, um, the, 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 the just a new law on family, uh, the books of Alexandra Kolontai on uh, uh, sexual freedom and equality between men and women, and uh, after we took the technology where. Uh, the oppression are uh, obedience because of her social uh, environment, because of her cultural, cultural discrimination, and because of gender discrimination. We talk about the sectionality, and this is uh, maybe the, the up to date uh, uh, problematic today is just how to manage intersectionality in the right way. Uh, this is all. Um, tu vas descendre du coup ou pas pour voir Yamina I was pleased uh, and I thank uh, uh, Mrs. Florence Gabet who did a wonderful uh, job in, uh, in, in just gathering all these uh, uh, big personalities and I see on the screen many CEDS alumni I, I am greeting and I am congratulating also uh, Marie-Claude Anne-Claude Blou uh, 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 Robert Michael, uh, Suha Ii, and all the others who are here. Uh, I, I just want to greet all the persons who are uh, just participating to this event. It's all. I, won't, I don't want to be long, I promise. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for this word and uh, the word of hope and uh, i hope see you soon thank you thank you and goodbye thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you happy women's day thank you very much G, 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 G. Bonne fête à vous. Have a nice day for everyone, women and men. 